GraphQL is a really exciting way for us to query our APIs. And it's a little bit different than the way that REST APIs work. GraphQL lets us kind of query for exactly what we want and get exactly what we need back from our API. So on top of GraphQL is a tool called Hasura. And Hasura gives us a GraphQL API that is instant and real time. So that means we can build out these really cool real time apps using Hasura. So I wanna kind of demonstrate how we can use Hasura. I've been using it a lot lately and it's a lot of fun for building out real time applications. So on the DigitalOcean Marketplace, we have a Hasura GraphQL one click. So we can click this button right here, create a Hasura GraphQL droplet. Let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. All right, so we get dropped into our dashboard for DigitalOcean. We have Hasura is the uh, image that we're gonna use here. Choose the plan, I'll use the basic plan. I'll keep it on the 40. And let's go something closer to me. Let's go for New York. Let's add SSH keys. And then down here, we are going to just go ahead and start up our droplet. We don't need any more droplets than one. We don't need to add tags or uh, keep this in the default project and we're good on backup since this is kind of a test run. So we'll hit create droplet right here. We'll let that run. And now that we see that our droplet is done getting created, we have this get started button, which is gonna take us back to the Hasura GraphQL in our marketplace. So if we scroll down here, this is all the stuff we get. We get Postgres in this droplet. We get the Hasura GraphQL engine, which is gonna look at our Postgres uh, database and use that. So let's see. We can visit the droplet IP in our browser to open up the Hasura console. So this is really cool. The console kind of gives us an in-browser experience for creating the schema for our database. So if I go over here, here's this IP address, copy that. Uh, I'm gonna paste that in here. This is gonna load up our Hasura console. And now we are dropped right into a graphic QL, which is basically a playground for us to play around with our API. But in order for us to play around with our API, we're going to need some data first. So let's go into data. I'm going to create a new table and we'll call this table dogs. Columns, I'm going to go ID and then we're going to do an integer for auto increment. And let's go for a name for dogs and that'll just be a text. Now check this out, we're building out our entire database schema using Hasura, and it's gonna provision our Postgres database that's on our droplet, all without ever touching a line of code. So this is really, really cool. We have dogs table here. We have our two columns. We're gonna go to primary key, set that to ID. Go down here, and let's just add a table. So that went ahead and created a table, and now we can go to insert rows, type in the name for, let's say, Bella, which is my dog right there. Let's add another one, Fido, which is classic. Maybe another one for, like, Hercules, if you have a really strong dog. And now that we have three sets of data, if we go browse rows, there's three pieces of data, three dogs in our database. We can go up to this GraphQL now, click into our GraphQL kind of explorer, and I'm gonna delete all that. What we can do here is we can write query. And in GraphQL, we get a lot of really nice auto completion type tools. So I'm gonna hit control space bar, and these are all the things we can kind of click through. So I'll say dogs, and then I'll do, I want the ID of each dog. So I'll press play right here and that will go query our database and get the IDs of all of the dogs in our database. Now this is what's really cool about GraphQL is it only queries for what you tell it to. So if I wanted name, we could bring in the name and press play. If I wanted only the name, I could delete ID, press play, and that only brings in the name. So you can see how if our data set is really, really large, GraphQL helps us keep our HTTP calls really low because we're only sending through and requesting the data that we need. Okay, so here's the other really cool part about Hasura is that you can change this query 
to be a subscription, press play, and now that is now what's called a GraphQL subscription, and that connection stays open. And then if I go over here, I'm gonna duplicate this tab and bring this out to the right over here. Go over to data, go into our dogs table, insert row, and let's see if I can't screw this over. Well, let's go over here. So as I insert a row, we should be able to see new dogs pop up because this is a subscription. This is a real-time thing. So let's add in another dog. Um, I don't know. Let's go for Sammy, which is the DigitalOcean shark. Sammy could be a dog too. So we'll hit save. And immediately watch that real-time update right there. Real up there. Time. So if you had a GraphQL subscription on your front end, maybe you had a React app or something like that, all of your apps would show up as real time and they would mirror whatever was in your database with whatever subscription you created. So that's Hasura, a real time GraphQL API on DigitalOcean using Postgres in a droplet. Lots of cool stuff right there.